Good morning. Thank you for worshiping with us online. Here at Resurrection United Methodist Church, we will continue to worship uh, in this way until the COVID-19 uh, restrictions are lifted. Uh, just one note, uh, in a couple of weeks it will be Easter and uh, for that service, we will have uh, an entire service recorded uh, and available, uh, including the music with Craig and Kaylin and the band, and so we look forward to that. Well, we are continuing in our series, Surprise the World, based on Michael Frost's book of that title. Frost encourages us to live questionable lives, lives that cause people to, to ask us, why do you do that? And then we can tell them about our faith. And we have heard about bless and eat and listen. And today's message is on learn. To learn Christ. Not just about Christ, but to learn Christ deeply and personally. Now, how will that surprise the world? Well, we'll see that in a little bit. But first, I want to ask you, who do you pray to? I know you pray to God, but what name do you use when you start a prayer? If you were to fill in the blank, dear blank, as you start a prayer, what do you usually say? Dear God, Lord, Heavenly Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit. I grew up in a, a praying home, and we went to Sunday school and church, and in our prayers, we usually started, Dear God, or sometimes Lord, or maybe even Heavenly Father. But the only mention of Christ was at the end when we'd say, In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. We unintentionally prayed as if Jesus were an afterthought. Not that we didn't believe in Jesus, we did. But we didn't really pray to Jesus in that way. In fact, much about Jesus was, it was something that we simply learned about. We learned about Jesus, but we didn't talk to him. At least not very much. And even in the way that we talked about uh, learning Christ, we talked about Christian education as if Jesus were a study topic and not learning somebody like we would a friend or a hero. In Surprise the World, Michael Frost talks about the way that the surfers talk about Kelly Slater. He tells the story of a group of, of Christian surfers in Australia, and he was talking with them, and he asked them, what they knew about Kelly Slater, a famous surfing champion. And the room practically exploded. People knew everything, what he had won and how he, he surfed. And, and they were so excited. Then he asked them, um, and tell me about Jesus. And they were sort of, uh, well, um, he died on a cross. Uh, just some statistics. They didn't talk about Jesus in the same way that they talked about Kelly Slater. And I'm wondering if the same isn't true for us. Do we talk about Jesus as our hero, our friend, a role model, a guide, someone that, that we know personally so we can talk of and not just about? Back when my kids were little, uh, everyone, wanted to, everyone wanted to be like Mike, as in Michael Jordan. People collected his cards, they knew his stats, they copied his moves, and they wore his Air Jordan tennis shoes. My kids were, were caught up in the Michael Jordan thing as much as anybody else. And my youngest child, his name is Lee Jordan Miller. Now, the Jordan comes from the Jordan River, where uh, he went when he was still uh, in the womb. Tammy and I visited Israel and we're there when she's pregnant with Lee. And so we took the Jordan as his middle name from the Jordan River. But when he was a little child and people would ask him what his name was, he would say, my name is Lee Michael Jordan Miller. 
Now I wonder, who do we respect so much that we would add their name to our own like Lee did? I mean, maybe there is a, a favorite uncle or a grandma. Maybe it's a sports hero or a video game player or a singer or, um, or maybe even a pastor. People talk about Pastor Chris and Pastor Dwayne and Pastor Jeff with, with enthusiasm and, and passion. And I'm wondering, what if we took the time to know Christ in such a way that, that that's how we talked about him? That we talked about, about Jesus and, and of Jesus and what he is doing in our life and what he has done in the past? What if we spent some time knowing Jesus so deeply and personally? Would that change the world? Would it surprise the world if we lived that way? I think maybe it might. I think maybe people would be so surprised that someone who talks passionately about Christ that they would say, maybe I should know this person too. So the challenge for this week is to spend one period of time, doesn't, doesn't matter how long it is, but to spend one period of time learning Christ. And we can do that by by reading the Gospels or by reading other books about Jesus or, or even by, by watching movies about Christ. But what if we spent one time, at least one, this week learning of Christ? We might get so passionate that it might surprise the world. So let's start with, with reading one of the Gospels. Uh, or any of the Gospels. I mean, we can do it in a different, number of different ways. Perhaps the easiest way is to just start with reading through an entire Gospel. Set aside some time this week and read one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. If you read Mark, it's going to take you about 90 minutes. If you read the others, it's going to take you a little over two hours. That's about the length of a movie. So if you set aside one uh, amount of, of movie time and instead read one of the Gospels to discover Jesus in that way. That will give you an overview. But maybe you've regularly been doing that kind of, of reading. So another approach you can take to the Gospels is to take just a section of the Gospel but really go deep. Really learn Christ in, in, in a deep, deep way by diving into the scripture. And that's what we're going to do in just a minute. We're going to take just a portion of John's chapter 4 and we're going to, to look at it to see what we can pull out of it when we look at it deeply. Now I'll give you just an overview of the story. It's the story of Jesus and the woman at the well. And you may know that, that Jesus has gone to this well and there he encounters a Samaritan woman, and he asks her for a drink. Now she is surprised that Jesus asked her this because Jews don't associate with Samaritans. And she's even more surprised when Jesus tells her about her five previous marriages and the fact that the man she's living with right now isn't even her husband. And she runs off and she tells her village, come see a man who knows everything about me. And the village comes and they meet Jesus and they become believers. So let's read through it verse by verse and explore what this shares with us of Jesus. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar. Near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? 
his disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Well, right away we see one aspect of Christ and his character. And that is that he breaks down barriers. Things that normally separate people, those barriers are broken down in Christ. And we don't have the, the separation between Jews and Samaritans and, and Hastings. But what about those other barriers? What about those other ways in which uh, we separate ourselves from people? She says, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan, so how can you ask a drink from me? Well, what, what might we say? You're a Packer fan and I'm a Viking fan. So how can we have a drink together? Or you're a Democrat, I'm a Republican. Or, or you have your family, I have my family. Whatever it is that, that separates us, Jesus breaks down those barriers. And we continue in verse 10. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? And Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water that I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. In the time of Jesus, living water uh, can mean two things. First, it can mean flowing water, like a stream, like a river. But it also has a meaning that Jesus gives, life-giving water. Living water is life-giving water. In fact, Jesus says that the life-giving water that he gives actually is to eternal life, that he offers us eternal life. I've been thirsty many times, but there's only one time when I thought that I would die of thirst. We were out uh, in the desert, and we had run out of water. And it was miles back to, to any source of water, and... The temperature was well over 100, and we didn't know if we would make it. We prayed, and then we continued on. When there in a dry riverbed was a little trickle of water welling up from out of the sand. It was maybe only an inch deep, and it flowed for, for just a little ways before it dried up in the desert heat. But that little bit of water quenched our thirst and enabled us to go on and to make it out of that desert. That's what Jesus says he provides. He provides that water in the midst of our desert times that wells up inside of us and enables us to carry on. And not just to go on, but to thrive and to have life. Jesus saves our lives. He gives us living water. Well, verse 15, the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You're right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you've just said is quite true. Jesus knows her personally. Jesus knows us personally. The things that she hides, when she says, I have no husband, she doesn't really want to share the whole story. It's not a part of her life that, that she would want a stranger to know and perhaps not even those who are closer to her. 
But Jesus knows it anyway. And yet he still offers her friendship. And he offers her living water and eternal life. And it's the same way with us. Jesus knows every part of our life. Those things that are public knowledge, but also the things that we hide, that we're ashamed of, that we don't like to mention. And yet Jesus knows us. Jesus knows you. And still he comes. He comes and offers life. Verse 19, Sir, the woman said, I can see that you're a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. One thing that we learn from Jesus is that he wants us to worship in spirit and in truth. He wants us to not get hung up on the location to truthfully worship and love God. It may seem a little odd to worship uh, in this way. You're not in the sanctuary that you're used to. You're perhaps sitting in your living room, in your apartment. Maybe you're watching this uh, out in the yard. And it may not feel quite like church. But Jesus says it's not where it is that matters. It's that you're worshiping through the power of the Holy Spirit and that you're worshiping truly, that you're truly offering yourself to God in this time. And we can do that anywhere. I'm thankful that we have this this means of technology that allows us to, to do that and be connected and share this message. And I can't wait for the time when we can be back together and we can hug one another and we can sing with one another and we can all be together. And all of that is wonderful and great. But even if we can't, we can still worship in spirit and in truth wherever we are. And Jesus reminds us of that here in these verses. Go on to verse 25. And the woman said... I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Jesus is the Christ. And one thing that the Christ, the Messiah, does is make sense of things. He's the one who makes sense of everything. The woman says, when the... When the Christ comes, when the Messiah comes, then he'll explain things to us. And when we know Christ, when Christ is a part of our life and and lives within us, he helps us to make sense of this world, even the things that that we can't figure out right now, like this COVID-19 thing. Or maybe the other problems or, or questions that you have in your life Knowing Christ helps us make sense of those things and whatever we face. He is the Messiah. He is the Christ who does that. Verse 27. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Now this section doesn't uh, reveal anything about Jesus. But it does reveal what happens when we encounter Jesus in a way like this woman at the well. When Jesus touches us personally, when we realize that he knows us, when we realize that he is 
the Messiah. The woman can't help but run into town and to share it with her friends. To let the whole community know, come see, could this be? She lived a questionable life at that moment because she shared her passion for Christ. And they went out to meet him as well. And we can do that. When we share our passion for Jesus, people will be intrigued by it. And they too will want to know. They too will want to come and see. Verse 31. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? My food, says Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. What keeps Jesus going, what sustains him, is doing God's work. Now, of course, we know that Jesus does eat, and he had a physical body like ours, but he wants to make a point to the disciples who are so, so caught up and worried about the physical things, and they don't realize that Jesus has been about God's work in touching this woman's life. And he says, that's what sustains me. That's what keeps me going, is doing God's work. And that can keep us going as well during this time doing God's work. And we may have to get creative, and it may not be the way that we did God's work a few weeks ago. But every time you send someone a card, every time you lift up a prayer, every time you call someone on the phone, every time you make a donation, any time that you help out, you're doing God's work. And it's acts like that that will keep us going that will sustain us and nurture us, even as we maybe go stir-crazy with this stay-at-home order. Now, I'm going to skip a few verses here and just to close out, um, reading beginning with verse 39. Many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony, that he said, he told me everything I ever did. And so when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, And he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we've heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. Because of the questionable life that this woman has lived at this moment, and her passion for sharing what she learned about Jesus. Others have come and they've experienced Jesus for themselves. They too have become followers of Christ and realize that their Savior has come. First it was just about her story, but then they met and believed in him themselves. This week we can get to know Christ in such a deep and powerful way for ourselves. We can spend some time listening to his words through the scripture. We can spend some time observing his life. And then we too can share that with others. We too can share it. And it doesn't have to be just through the scriptures, although that's a great place to start, but but maybe you want to read some other books about Jesus. More books have been written about Christ than any other person in history. And there's some good ones out there. N.T. writes a great author, writes some wonderful books about Christ, but there are so many that might be a blessing to you this week as you get to know Jesus. Or maybe watch a film. There's the Jesus film from the Jesus Film Project that, that is simply the gospel put, in, put onto film. But there are those old classics, uh, Godspell, Jesus Christ Superstar, or the one that so pertains to Holy Week, the passion of the Christ. Maybe watch one of those movies as well. Spend some time because in learning Christ, it will change you, but it will also 
surprise the world. So that's our challenge this week. Our challenge is to spend at least one period learning Christ. Through any of these, uh, these means. And if you do it, I think you'll be glad you did. And it will surprise the world. So we'll see you next week. It'll be Palm Sunday. And uh, we'll continue in our series. Uh, and it actually fits very well with Palm Sunday. So uh, I hope that we will meet to, uh, in that way. Uh, we won't be in person, but we will be back uh, sharing worship uh, through this electronic meme. But as we close, let us pray. So Jesus, we want to grow closer to you. We want to know you better. We want to experience you as a hero, as a friend, as our Savior, as the Messiah. Come to us in every way and help us to be so filled with love for you that other people notice and they ask us to tell about you. We pray this in your name. Amen.